Hello, and welcome to Eastern Roman History. As you may have already realised, this isn't the same voice that you're used to. Hi, I'm Ian Earth, and I'll be narrating in the place of Eastern Roman History for this episode. So let's begin. Ruling from AD 1328 to 1341, Andronicus III Paleologus led one of the Eastern Roman Empire's last genuine revivals before its decline and fall in 1453. The son of Emperor Michael IX, Andronicus came to the throne after a civil war between himself and his grandfather Andronicus II, who had been emperor since 1282. On the night of the 23rd of May, 1328, Andronicus III bribed one of the guards patrolling the walls of Constantinople. He let down a rope ladder allowing Andronicus's men to throw open the St. Romanus Gate, allowing Andronicus III and his army of 800 men to enter the city. Andronicus II abdicated the throne and was exiled to a monastery where he died in 1332. The soldier emperor Andronicus III and his best friend John Cantacuzanos started his reign by fending off the Bulgarian Tsar Michael Shishman's invasion of Thrace in June 1328. After defeating the Tsar, Andronicus signed a peace treaty with him, securing the border. John Cantacuzanos revitalised the Imperial Navy by constructing 10 warships that was largely paid for by donations by the aristocracy. A fleet would help secure the coasts of the Empire from attack and relieve the Eastern Roman Empire's total dependence on Italian merchant republics for naval aid. In 1329, Andronicus and John led an army of 4,000 troops into Bithynia to rescue the cities of Nicomedia and Nicaea, which were besieged by the Ottoman Turks. While marching to Nicomedia, the Romans engaged the Ottomans in the Battle of Pelicanon. The Romans were initially successful, but when Andronicus III was wounded, word quickly spread that the Emperor was dying, and the army panicked and routed. The Ottomans pursued and inflicted heavy casualties on the Eastern Roman army. Andronicus and John withdrew from Bithynia. While Andronicus was recovering, he asked John to become co-emperor, but John refused. The Battle of Pelicanon was significant because it was the last time the Romans attempted to reverse their declining fortunes in Asia Minor. It was also one of the only major battles fought between the Ottomans and the Romans. In autumn, Leo Kalathetos led a Chian uprising against the Gionese rulers of the island. Andronicus sent the Roman fleet to support the revolt and captured the Gionese lord. Having taken Chios, Andronicus then sailed to the Gionese colony of Phocea, which offered him tribute. While in Phocea, he received embassies from the Turkish emirs of Aidin and Sarahan. Meanwhile, Andronicus III and John enacted sweeping reforms to the justice system in the Eastern Roman Empire. A major problem that had been allowed to run rampant by the incompetent Andronicus II was corruption. The sale of officers was endemic, and the poor in the countryside often turned to ecclesiastical courts to get their justice, as they were generally much fairer than the civic ones. To rectify these circumstances, Andronicus and John set up four universal justices of the Romans. Two were clergymen and two were laymen. They had exceptional powers to enforce the law anywhere in the empire, especially when dealing with corruption and tax evasion. Their verdicts were final and irreversible. Later in his reign, Andronicus would also create local equivalents of these universal justices for places such as Thessalonica and Maria to restore law and order and prevent corruption. As well as this, Michael Blastaris compiled the Syntagma, a collection of rulings from civic and church courts in 1335. The reform of the justice system spurred the creation of the last major Byzantine judicial works. The Hexabiblos by Constantine Harmonopoulos in 1345. This replaced Leo VI's Basilisca as the standard law book of the empire until its fall in 1453, and was the basis of other law codes such as the Code of Stefan Dushan. In 1330, with Serbia becoming more of a threat to the empire's western border, Andronicus and Michael Shishman planned a joint campaign against Serbia. However, the death of the Bulgarian Tsar at the Battle of Velbuzd caused Andronicus to turn on his former ally, Bulgaria, 
and conquered Mesembria and Anchialus from the Bulgarians. Soon afterwards, Andronicus III fell seriously ill while staying at Didymoticon and designated John Cantacuzanos as his heir presumptive. In 1331, Nicaea fell to the Ottoman Turks. Emir Orhan allowed the populace to leave for Eastern Roman territory and then occupied the city. Also, the Bulgarians retook Mesembria and Anchialus from the Romans. The following year, Andronicus III's son, John V, was born. Andronicus accepted an invitation by the Venetians for the Eastern Roman Empire to join them. France, the Pope, Cyprus, and the Knights Hospitaller of Rhodes to form a holy league against the Turkish Emirates of Anatolia. The league established a standing navy of 20 galleys from Venice, Byzantium, and Rhodes, the Romans providing half of the ships. Their purpose was to keep the Turkish pirates in check. Andronicus launched an invasion of Bulgaria, taking advantage of a rebellion against Tsar Ivan Alexander. Andronicus' army was defeated at the Battle of Rosa Castro and forced to hand back everything he had taken, but peace was re-established. In 1333, the ruler of Thessaly, Stephen Gabriopoulos, the Corapalites, a semi-independent Byzantine vassal, died. Michael Monomachos and a Roman army invaded Thessaly at the same time as John II or senior of Epirus. John conquered the west and the Romans captured the north and east. Andronicus III arrived in the autumn at the head of an army and drove the Epirots out of West Thessaly, fully annexing the despot of Thessaly in a few weeks. This was the first significant territorial conquest in decades. Andronicus III negotiated peace with the Ottomans at the price of the empire, paying the Ottomans a tribute of 12,000 gold hyperpora per year to save the city of Nicomedia, which the Ottomans besieged. However, once the emperor returned to Constantinople, Siragianis Paleologos rebelled and led Serbian armies to conquer Castoria and Okrid from the Eastern Roman Empire. Andronicus led an army to drive out the Serbs, and his officer, Sfrancis Paleologus, assassinated Siragianis. The king of Serbia, Stephen Dushan, made peace with Emperor Andronicus, who handed back over Castoria, but kept Okrid. Andronicus then helped Serbia drive off a Hungarian invasion. The Hungarians withdrew at the approach of Roman troops. Andronicus III reopened negotiations with the Pope for church union. A letter from 1339 by Barlaam indicates that Andronicus III wanted an ecumenical council of bishops from East and West and involving all five traditional patriarchs to mend the Great Schism. Unfortunately, it did not produce any results. In 1334, the Holy League launched an attack on the Adenid pirates with the intention of capturing Smyrna. An armada of 40 vessels defeated the Karasi Turks at Adramitten, but failed to reach Smyrna. The fleet withdrew and the League collapsed. Some blame the Romans for its lack of success because they did not send their fleet. The Genese colony of Phasia cancelled their suzerainty to the Eastern Roman Empire and attacked Chios and Lesbos. Andronicus responded by raising the walls of the Genese colony at Galata next to Constantinople and used his navy to blockade Phasia and Lesbos. John Cantacuzanos made an alliance with the Adenids and with help from their fleet and soldiers defeated the Genese. Andronicus III's solution to the Turkish menace and the Latins was to ally with rival Turkish emirs. With Phasia, Chios, and Lesbos now firmly in Eastern Roman control, Andronicus married his bastard daughter Irene Paliagina to the Emperor of Trebizond, Basil Grand Comenos. John II Orsini was poisoned by his wife Anna in 1337 after a turbulent marriage. She became regent for her son, Nikephoros II Orsini. In addition, 12,000 Albanian nomads had flooded into northern Greece, rebelled against the Romans, and raided Barat and Canina in northern Epiros. Meanwhile, the Ottomans advanced and captured Nicomedia, breaking the peace treaty from 1333. Three universal justices of the Romans were put on trial for accepting bribes and exiled. 
This trial seems to have ended the spread of corruption into this office. Andronicus and John prioritise exploiting the weakness of the despot of Epiros, rather than trying to reclaim Nicomedia. In 1338, they both led an army supplemented by 2,000 Adenid allies. The Turks were decisive in crushing the Albanian rebels. Hordes of loot were recovered, and the Albanians were subdued. This was also the first time an emperor had visited northern Epiros since Manuel I. The regent, Anna, tried to negotiate a surrender with Andronicus at Barat, but he insisted in their total surrender. The Epirots did not want the slaughter and enslavement that the Adenids had unleashed on the Albanians to happen to them, so they surrendered the despot to Andronicus, who afterwards dismissed his Turkish allies. Anna and her daughters were resettled in Thessalonica. Meanwhile, Nikephoros was spirited off to Achaea by Epirot loyalists. In 1339, Nikephoros II, supported by Catherine of Valois, returned to head an Epirot revolt against Eastern Roman rule. Michael Monomachos and John Angelos were sent with an army to check the rebellion in December 1339. Andronicus and John arrived the following year. The Romans besieged Arta, the rebels' stronghold, and thanks to John's charismatic oratory and diplomacy, persuaded the Epirots to end their rebellion. By November 1340, the rebellion was over, and Nikephoros II joined the Emperor's court in Thessalonica, where Nikephoros was betrothed to John Cantacuzanos' daughter, Maria. This amazing triumph spurred the Frankish lords of Peloponnese to declare their loyalty to the Emperor Andronicus rather than Catherine of Valois in 1340, and sent envoys to convey their allegiance. During Andronicus's reign, the Hesychast controversy broke out. This religious controversy was propounded by Gregory Palamus, a monk from Mount Athos. He believed that by repeating a short prayer that was merely a single sentence, and bowing his head and holding his breath, that they could see the light surrounding God. Balaam of Calabria proclaimed this to be heresy. The Orthodox Church examined hesychasm at a church synod in June 1341, and rejected Balaam of Calabria's anti-hesychast stance. They also forbade further discussion of the matter. Days after this council, and a little before the Peloponnesian lords arrived in Andronicus' court, the emperor suddenly fell seriously ill and died. His eldest son, John V, became emperor, and John Cantacuzanos acted as regent. The reign of Andronicus III, Paleologos, was very successful, despite some initial failures. He had already begun to rectify many of the failures of his grandfather's reign, and although it could be said that Andronicus should have better planned for his succession, the subsequent civil war after his death was more the fault of his successor than Andronicus himself. Warren Treadgold had this to say about the reign of Andronicus III. Warren Treadgold, A History of the Byzantine State and Society, page 764. His had been, on the whole, a successful reign. The Empire had won Epirus, Thessaly, and the islands, more than it had lost in Bithynia and around Ocrid. Its army had fought at least as well as the armies of its neighbours, with the possible exception of the Ottoman Turks. Better still, more gains were within reach in Greece, and the real architect of Andronicus' success the grand domestic John Cantacuzanos remained in good health. Loyal to his friend's memory, Cantacuzanos seemed the ideal protector for Andronicus' son John. I have been your host today, Iron Earth. If you've enjoyed the history that we've just spoken about right now, please by all means head over to my channel, Iron Earth, it's on YouTube, where you can see myself and Eastern Roman history play through the life and times of Andronicus in a series of custom Age of Empires 2 scenarios. It was a live stream, it was a lot of fun, I strongly recommend you go check it out. Speaking of live streams, I stream on Twitch quite regularly, so come and find me at ironearth on twitch.tv. 
And of course, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe to Eastern Roman History, the best resource on YouTube for everything Byzantine. That's all for now, and this has been Eastern Roman History.